My name's David Hooton and I'm the Forestry Commission Deer Officer based in the East of England. Across most of the UK we've got deer populations expanding their range and in a lot of areas expanding numbers. So we've got six species of deer living wild in the UK and they all impact slightly differently on the habitats but they all browse the structures that we're interested in from an environmental and biodiversity point of view. When we're looking at landscape management we're trying to work out how many deer we've got, but that's almost impossible because we don't always see them. So population estimates are, are very challenging. So we base a lot of our work on the impact of deer to landowner objectives. So working with the landowners, we identify what it is they want from their landscape. Do they want the woodlands to regenerate? What sort of structures within the woodlands do we want to see? What are the associated species that live within those woodlands and are they important? So the butterflies, the bees, the birds, the bird populations. So we're in Suffolk today, we're looking at uh, SSSI woodlands, uh, a lot of different compartments across the estates we'll be on today. And these woodlands are important for their structure and their long history of management work and biodiversity. So here we've got elm uh, with hazel coppice and oak and ash. But what we're looking for is structure to our woodlands. Here you can look through and you can see that we've got a bit more of an understory because the coppice stalls are shooting. And when we look at the ground floor, we've got the elm suckers, the elm suckers here, and then we've got ash regeneration here. Just starting to come through, it's a three or four years old, and it's coming through because it's not being browsed. There is some little bits of browse at the top of this one, and then we've also got some field maple, and again, that's being browsed. And when we're looking at the browsing effect of deer, they affect the structure, they affect how thick the woodland is and how good that will be for bird life and bugs and beetles and insects. This woodland is a slightly different sort of structure to where we've been earlier. It's on the same estate. It's a hornbeam with pine mix. It was planted back in the 1950s by the Forestry Commission. But the woodland structure here is again, there's no understory. It's where the deer are present in much higher numbers. And the bramble here, a very small patch. There's some light coming through, but it's not growing because it's being browsed back. What we've also got here is, is a browse line. You can see there's no vegetation in this section here until you get to about five foot high. And that's the height to which the, de the fallow deer will browse. This is a hornbeam again. Uh, we'd expect to see a number of smaller shoots coming up, but every little shoot on the side here has just been browsed off. And as you get to the height the deer can't reach, the fallow deer can't reach, you start to see the branches starting to emerge again. So all the way down here, they've all been taken off. And it's because the deer like feeding on twigs, uh, little shoots, particularly in the spring, they eat that regeneration. Fallow deer are eating about five kilos of food a day. So that's a significant volume of food that's got to come off the natural environment and the farm crops in this area. So we've got an exclosure here. It's an area that's been fenced to keep the deer out from it. It's very small, but it is comparable to the other bits here. We've got the same amount of light coming in as other areas outside. And it's been up now since about 2005, but it's got this undergrowth of bramble developing. And it's also the start of regeneration. So there's a bit of hazel regeneration down there. And there's a little bit of ash. Look at that bit of hazel down there. That's a lovely bit of hazel down there. And then you've got the bluebell stems from the spring here as well. So this is the sort of structure of woodland we would have expected to see. With no browsing, I appreciate, and we don't necessarily want no deer, some deer are good, but this is what's being lost from the rest of this woodland area. And I think that's really important to understand what it is we would expect to see in these woodlands if there were no deer browsing. Okay, we've got a, a new, new hedgerow here. It's been in a few years now, obviously it's establishing itself very nicely. There's odd bits of browsing on it, but mixed species, and it's doing very, very well. But everything's coming up, whether it's a, the hazel or the hawthorn, the field maple, and it's just a good, healthy hedge with a bottom developing.
this hedgerow here was planted in the same season as the hedgerow we saw previously. That last hedgerow had a thick understory to it and it was developing into a proper hedge. This has been browsed continually through its life. It's still alive, but it's not developing into a hedge. It's just little spindly bits that have very little value to biodiversity, bird life or anything else. Um, and over the time, it will become weak and it will eventually potentially die off if the population of deer isn't managed effectively to keep them off. What's good in this landscape is that we have got collaboration with landowners adjoining and there is a good, strong, robust deer management policy in the area. So I'm hoping that this hedgerow, along with some of the woodland understory, will start to recover. But it's only through collaborative management, landowners working together, the deer stalkers working together, to agreed objectives for this area.